Naturally, mastering started out in the analog domain, with individual EQs, compressors, and other hardware devices hooked up in a chain for processing, with the results eventually printed on a master tape and cut to a metal disc master for vinyl pressing. Even today, professional mastering suites often incorporate a collection of high-end analog processors, again, EQ and dynamics primarily, along with their digital tools. High-end speakers and amplifiers are chosen for their accuracy and transparency, and additional reference systems may be available to more closely approximate all the different playback systems and formats that modern listeners are likely to hear their music on. There are plenty of analog boxes that may be employed to good effect in mastering. A lot of these would come under the umbrella of character processors, devices that impart a characteristic analog quality, which is often desirable. These include various tube and solid-state EQs and compressors. Many people like to run digital audio through analog circuitry just to get the sometimes beneficial effect of that circuitry, hopefully a warming presence that may be lacking in the cleaner, more neutral digital signal path. Analog summing boxes are often used for this purpose, as they are in mixing. There are also a lot of dedicated analog mastering units, and though most of them are pretty pricey, they all provide the quality and feature set needed to achieve professional level mastering results. Often, an artist may want to try rendering the final master both digitally in the box and to a stereo analog tape recorder for the inimitable warmth and edge that that medium provides. In larger mastering suites, it's not uncommon to do both and then compare them, sometimes song by song, to see which songs benefit from the extra analog warmth and which fare better in the cleaner digital version. For those who try their hand at mastering in their own studio environment, big or small, while there's always the option of incorporating analog gear, especially if that gear is already there, most mastering nowadays will probably be carried out in the box with plugins or dedicated mastering applications. Every DAW has EQ and dynamics, and most include at least some dedicated mastering plugins. Logic, for example, which I'll use in a lot of these videos, has a mastering EQ, a multiband compressor, a brick wall limiter, and a collection of metering plugins, all providing suitable processing for mastering right out of the gate. And there's no shortage of dedicated third party mastering plugins. Both individual processors and bundles are available from companies like Isotope, Waves, Wave Arts, IK, Sonux, UAD, Sony, Steinberg, and a host of others. Many are even very reasonably priced. For example, Isotope's Ozone, in its most basic version, is an entire mastering suite for under $250, and Massey offers very inexpensive tools like its well-regarded L2007 mastering limiter in free limited feature versions as well. Even simulations of analog tape are up to snuff nowadays from players like Waves and UAD, among others, for those who still want that sound, even while they stay firmly ensconced in the box. In these tutorials, I'll demo with a number of different software mastering tools, including the ones that come with Logic and Pro Tools, and the Isotope Ozone collection. But first, a look at what to do to prepare mixes for mastering, the final pre-mastering stage.